Do you know how fast the move of God is? If you sleep for one month, you will be overtaken. In one year, I, I know what I'm saying. I, I'm not privileged to speak about things in a certain way, but I can tell you something. If God is moving you sleep for one year, you will just see yourself back. The people you are working with will seem as if they did. Boom! Why? It is not them moving. And they said, man of God, it's, it's five years ago I could have followed this thing you are doing. But you use two years to fight it, use one year to doubt, use one year to believe, and use one year to follow. You are already behind. Kayanos, 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 fresh tongues, Kayanos, fresh tongues. A new depth, a new fountain, a new depth, a new fountain, Kayanos! The greatest challenge we will have, we have now and we'll keep having for men of God is adjusting to the knowledge, to the information that is now needed for you now. Do you know what you have told yourself? Some of the time you need other things and think that you have actually changed. You have not. This is you for long. There are certain encounters that are forever cut off from you until you unlearn. There are certain things you can't change. It's, it's a wine skin now. Are you getting what I'm saying? Uh, Your wine skin can't carry. If you, I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you. First level is not to get anything, to do anything. First level is take time and unlearn certain things. Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't know how much you have been affected by what is not necessary. You don't know. And if you take a new wine and pour it into an, an old wine skin, what will happen to the wine? The bottle, well, the bottle will break and the wine will waste. So everything and anything that is poured into something or someone are still persist in the information that needs to be unlearned so that you can carry out new assignment for God is wasted. That's exactly how I wish we can project. But I know somebody can read it for me. That's exactly what was happening with Peter in the book of Acts chapter 10. Somebody help me and read Acts 10, where Peter said, not so, Lord. Verse 14. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything. Wait, let's get a mic for you. Just start from maybe one or two verses before then so that we can have context. Okay, verse 12. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth. Okay, and start a verse before. You are a pastor, so you should know. Yes, sir. Where, so, uh -huh. Verse 11. Okay. And saw heaven open. Okay. And, okay, from 10, sorry. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell so into a trance. So what was happening is that God was using a circumstantial thing to teach him a deep spiritual truth. Mm. What was happening looks as if it's just a normal thing. But the difference between one, one method of God's oppression and another is being captured in that moment. It looks as if it's just a normal circumstance. But the difference between the two directions of the level of God is being determined. What looks as if it's a normal circumstance is God choosing actually the verses through which he will accomplish his purposes as of that moment. Please read. Verse 11. And saw heaven opened, and a certain vessel descending unto him, and as it had been a great sheet, knit at the four corners, okay. and led down to the earth. Okay. Verse 12. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. Okay. 13. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill, and eat. Okay. 14. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or Just unclean. imagine. I hope you know you have done such. My uh, brother. Many times. Many times. 
many times. Do you know how many things God sanctified that you called unholy? Meanwhile, with your calling it unholy, you are still expecting God to move. He's telling you, this is, this is where I then move. This is how I ordained it. Yeah, bro. So, continue. Okay. Verse 16. 15. And the voice came, spake unto him again the second time. What God has cleansed, that cannot, that call not uncommon. Okay. 16. This was done thrice. And the vessel was received up again into heaven. That means the stronghold in the mind of Peter was so strong that God argued with him how many times? Three times. And he kept saying, not so, Lord. You don't know the power of strongholds. You don't know what you have become because of the information you fed yourself. A lot of people meet me and they said, man of God, it's, it's five years ago I could have followed this thing you are doing. But you use two years to fight it, use one year to doubt, use one year to believe, and use one year to follow. You are already behind. Do you know how fast the move of God is? If you sleep for one month, you will be overtaken. In one year, I, I know what I'm saying. I am not privileged to speak about things in a certain way, but I can tell you something. If God is moving you sleep for one year, you will just see yourself back. The people you are working with will seem as if they did. Boom! Why? It is not them moving. Now they can tell you strategy teaching. Maybe when Apostle Femi comes, he will teach you that one. But I'm teaching you from the realm of the spirit. Something carries people over. Something carries people. I will never, if I don't teach you this, that's the greatest strategy of a man of God. Something needs to carry you that cannot be explained. So if we come to pastor session and explain everything, if it is that easy, everybody should have it. There is a lot of things that cannot be explained that is happening. That means something is carrying somebody that is not written in a book. Several pastors has missed strategic seasons and kairoses of their life, and they are stuck. I hope you know that sacrifice is powerful. Huh? Yes, but not as powerful as obedience. In fact, <laughs> sacrifice is powerful on the day of obedience. The day you start to pay. So if God told you, do this, and two things happened. One, you didn't do it, or you waited, waited, waited. I hope you know that obeying God has a ripple effect. For example, you are a man of God. God can tell somebody to come and sow seed to you. You need to sort out something in your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your children, you told them, watch. You told them, I'm going to pay your school fees tomorrow. Now, your children came and told you about school fees. Who has need now? You are correct. Now, but the children can't get that money. You are the one that can get it. So God now met somebody that needs a promotion in his workplace, but cannot get it done except by a spiritual, a prophetic push. Are you getting the point? To come... God told the person, go to this man of God and sow this seed. So the man of God receiving the seed pays the children's school fees. The children receiving the school fees pays to the school that they are going to. Are you getting the point? The school being a Christian school pays tithe to their church. The church receiving the tithe were able to host their annual program. So as they are praying, Lord, give what fund for our annual program. The first thing is for that first man to what? Obey. And they are fasting and God told them, in two days I will do it. Are you seeing it? Now God come and met you and say, do this. I hope you know that the second point in obeying is obeying promptly. Because if you don't obey, God has already said two days. 
if God called you to do something in your territory and you kept delaying, kept delaying, kept delaying, there is a time frame for certain kind of labors in a certain kind of place over some life and destinies. There are some people you need to do some things over. I might travel out and they have, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, you keep delaying and then what God will do is to take that thing that he told you to do and give to another person. Even if you are better than the person. And that's the problem with pastors. They now look back and said, ah, this person that I'm better than. Do you know when I started ministry? Do you know this one? Do you know that one? I know one thing. You know what I know? You are disobedient. And we can stand here and analyze the reason why somebody can be disobedient. And in the case of Peter, and which is the case of many men of God, the greatest reason is sentiment. But that's for another day. Sentiment. <laughs> sentiment. I remember when God told me to come to this Newe and start. I tried to go everywhere. For six years, nothing happened. Part of my challenge is that my own biological father is also doing ministry in this town and is alive. How can, how, do, how does he sound now? You are still doing ministry the same place, even though it's not the same kind of ministry anyway. But, in fact, what people said is that me and my father, we are enemies. That's why I now, I now broke out and I'm doing my own ministry. My father that I, I'm so easy to me, and I'm, it's just that I'm not the kind of person that I, I don't, I avoid anything that looks like psychophancy and all that. So, and I don't like doing things so that I will prove point. So, many things, and even people cancelled me and say, no, you cannot. But when I go back in the secret, God will tell me, if you don't do this within this time, you will miss it. There is a time frame to obedience. If you miss that time, brother, you will struggle. You will struggle in ministry as if God did not come. If you see a man that missed his time, he is struggling as if God did not call him. So much struggle, so much labor, yielding nothing, yielding little. What grace can do, your own human effort is now the one powering it. Are you getting the point? What grace is meant to do? Gee, they come and sit here now. Come. No be cheated again. Come now. Make space for Chidi. Let him sit. He's a man of God. Ah, the two of you is wearing to match you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The stronghold that Peter has built did not allow him to obey God. Please, you can sit there. That's just the whole point I'm trying to make. He kept saying, not so, Lord. Not so, Lord. Not so, Lord. Not so, Lord. God is telling you something. You are telling him, not so, Lord. Who are you? Even if you will obey him, die. It's your fear that is your problem. Die. Of course, you will die. You might not die physically. But you will die to your opinion, die to human opinion, die to what people will say, die to what you will suffer. You are going to suffer. Now, even if you teach, even if you are a new creation reality teacher, first, even if you are teaching the people the same thing so that their life will get better, you as a pastor suffers. So we, even if... Even if you don't believe, even if the audience doesn't believe this message, it is dangerous for a pastor not to believe that there is suffering in the calling. It's very dangerous. Very dangerous. Legitimate suffering, not the one that Satan brought to. 
<laughs> of course, I'm not talking about the one I set and brought. I'm saying suffering, labor. If it's those days we are in the video, you carry megaphone on the head. I don't tell you he's a big man, but in the beginning, you know, Marek? <laughs> Join and carry speaker. An average pastor is a technician, an usher. Uh, yes, am I correct? Yes, sir. You will do many things for long until somebody will take it from you. Somebody said, God, until God gives him a heart. A sound shares and people. God, God didn't call him. If you ask me, you said he's not ready. Me, I said God didn't call him. God call you. The urgency of the call will not even allow you to sleep. You will not bother whether rain is beating you. Ha! Church or how many genuine ministries started in a hall? He started in people's parlor under trees. People's parlors under trees. Classrooms. Classroom is even good. Store. Ah, you have money to pay for store. <laughs> you have money to pay for store. You already have money now. Field, open field like this. The only thing you have is word and prayer and God's conviction. People will believe you. You look back how you started, some of us, you wonder what people believed and followed you. If it is not that God called, say after me, I will stay steadfast to the call. I will stay steadfast to the call. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Over time, it will be easing out. Over time, it will be easing out. Is it not true? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. so, so at different rates. Different rates, dependent on the kind of calling, on the kind of principle you you practice a few things that you affect it, which is not my labor now. So I said that there are three levels of knowledge. The first one is information. And for information to come, you have to first of all unlearn before you what? Learn. Then the second level of information is revelation. So after me, revelation. Now, the reason why I went through this route is the reason why I went through this route is because most of what will be taught here is on the third part that is wisdom. There is information, there is revelation. The third one is wisdom. First level is what? Information. Second level, revelation. Third level, wisdom. Now, majority of what will be taught here because Apostle Femi will take over now. We be with, what is wisdom? Wisdom is simply a strategy that brings solutions to challenges. Are you seeing it? It's like a strategy table. By the time, if wisdom is properly cooked, now when wisdom, this strategy table matures, you have what we call systems, power things. But there is a reason why I'm, I will have to touch a little on relation. I wrote something on my notes here. I said, first of all, number one, information is, is like, is like um, the general awareness and information that is available to anybody. But for that to be practical to you, for that to apply to you personally, you need revelation. If a man of God comes here and, and teaches you seven things, even if he works for him, even if he works for everybody, it will not necessarily work for you. You have to remember that the call to ministry is not a physical thing. It's not business world per se. Even though some of the principles there will work, some things still hinge on spiritual appropriateness. So you have to consider this. And it is on this basis that you have to have the revelation that the man had before he gave you the information. That's what I'm saying. So if you don't have the revelation that a man had before he gave you the information, and go ahead and build a system, there are several things that can happen. 
And if it's in the move of God, the Holy Spirit will live. Systems without revelation will box the move of God. Are you seeing it now? So that's the major thing I want. That's what I wrote on my notes. So you, need, you really need to have the revelation. You cannot just be practicing things without having the revelation that the person that handed out information had. That's why you have to be spiritual in this class. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's simple but profound. I wrote here, don't be in a hurry to systematize until you have profound revelation. System without revelations will keep the move of God or it will not even allow it to emerge at all. Amen. I don't, I know I have other things to say, but it's not my duty now. <laughs>